Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this holiday weekend. We're so glad to have you with us. Um, please stand in, in body or spirit, if you're able. And we'll start our morning singing with hymn number 85. Number 85. <laughs> It's not easy, like herding cats. It's not easy to do unless you're organized. And so he wanted to be organized and he wanted to write a little song that would be a march that they could march to. They could keep them in step and, kept, and without even knowing it, they were under control of the, of the person leading the march. So he came up with this the night before they were going to go. And he wrote the, the lyrics and he was, he said he didn't like some of the rhymes because they weren't really all that good, but the, but the song was intact. <clears throat> Uh, 20 years later, a gentleman by the name of Arthur Sullivan, Sullivan of Gilbert and Sullivan, wrote the melody, and he wrote it as a march with this little boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba in the bass line. And then was a song that the children eventually used, it was used every year, and it became a very popular thing. It was fun to stay, it was fun to march to. Now, the images of war and militarism aren't talking about fighting against each other, it's more talking about um, fighting the good faith, uh, fighting the good fight of faith. But over the years, people have colored this hymn to be uh, a negative, and so it's no longer in some of the books. In fact, I pulled it out because it's just a wonderful singing to him. It has a good message of, of fighting for the war of sin as opposed to the war of evil. Nonetheless, sorry about the long details. Turn with me if you would to hymn number 167. Number 167. Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tone. 
definition of a, of a Christian formation. Uh, on this, when I was looking up stuff on other things that came across this, the Christian formation is the work of God's Holy Spirit in the lives of his people, slowly growing them into the image and character of Jesus. I just thought that was simple and elegant, and I like the word slowly. We don't rush our education, we get it piece by piece, and that's why we're here every Sunday morning. Also want to welcome Robert Upton, who has been with us several times this summer. We're so grateful to have her here with us at the name us kind of this morning. So Robert, thank you for coming as well. For our prayer hymn this morning, you can close your book. We're gonna do this one out the top of your head. I'm pretty sure, but we're gonna do one verse, and I'm pretty sure you know it. If you're like me, it's the first song you ever learned as a church, as a church now. This is Jesus Loves Me, this I know. Just one verse. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. You see, you did know it, I'm learning this. Y'all have a lovely Sunday. Thank you for singing. Thank you and Wayne for being here. Wayne is with us. It's a great one. Uh, Bill White has our opening prayer. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I have a prayer that I'd like to read and I'll have to give credit to David Jeremiah for having put this together. Uh, he's uh, someone that Sunni and I really enjoy listening to. Uh, please find the image to play with me. Dear Father, may we be peacemakers and may strive to comfort those who are hurting, show mercy when falsely accused. Reflect the character and righteousness of our Christ always. Recognize that we are called to represent Jesus to the world. Commit to thinking, speaking, and living by his ideals every day. And may we humbly do this in the strength of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Bill. Welcome to everybody who's here. I'm, I'm glad all of you are. Uh, and we welcome uh, the ladies. I don't know whether uh, we have any here but from the Agape class or not, but um, I normally welcome them. So, welcome to the Agape class. 
and welcome to all the uh, members of the Young Men's Bible Class who have come back with us. And uh, uh, a number of people are here, and so uh, we certainly appreciate that you're with us again. Let's see, it's a uh, health and welfare program, and uh, Paul has uh, an announcement here. I got an email last night from Bob Lovejoy saying one of our former members, Bill Court, I'm sure a lot of you might remember him. He moved away to Florida, but he's back now, and he is really struggling. I'm not sure what what his problem is. Bob did say, but uh, he said he Bill is struggling and he's not making any progress, and we need to keep him in his prayers. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, any announcements that uh, would be invited to the members of the class and the church? Right, everybody's quiet. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know um, how many of you ever gone into a room, got there, and then didn't know what you were looking for, and had to go back to where you started from and do it over again. I have. But the uh, strangest thing I've done like that recently, I wanted to change the uh, channel on the TV set. So I picked up the remote, put my hand and pointed toward the TV set. It wasn't the remote, it was a hair dryer. <laughs> and that particular Cool. <laughs> um, some weeks ago, I told you about um, uh, misidentity in the case of a guy and a woman who had had her face with and everything else. Well, this one is a, sort of a case of a, a mistaken identity, too. It seems that every night, Louise's husband, Harry, went out, got, had a bender, and uh, he would come home, and uh, she would always yell at him. Well, she was talking to one of her friends on the phone, and uh, said, all we do is fuss. And the friend said, and she told her about his staggering home uh, every evening, and she was awfully tired of it. And uh, they didn't get along because of it. And the friend said, well, why don't you try a different tact? Why don't you, when he comes in, give him a big kiss, hug him, make him feel good. And she said, well, I'll try that. So John, uh, Harry staggers in one night. She runs up and gives him a big kiss on the door and says, come on in, honey, and have a seat. Um, he does. He takes off his shoes, socks, rubs his feet, and uh, pats him on the back or beside his sort of. And uh, finally, she says, I'm sure you're tired. Don't you think it's time for us to go upstairs and go to bed? And he says, Well, we might as well. If I go home, I'm going to be chewed out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Donna Chase says, All right. Going to try to be like Bill and just scoot it over. Every time you tell those jokes, Keith, I, I may have said this last time I was here today, but it reminds me so much of my dad, who was really good at telling jokes like you are. I don't feel like that's been passed down as much, maybe. I don't think we have as many good joke tellers as we used to, but my dad and all of his, my dad was one of 10 children, and all of the Kids, especially the boys, and there were seven of them, the three girls were all great at telling jokes. So I appreciate that. I wanted to mention to you all today um, I know that if you're a church member, hopefully you got your fall catalog this week in the mail. If you didn't, it came actually in a big envelope. So look for it. If you didn't get it, there are lots of them around the church you can pick up too so it has 
all of our fall programming, including what you all and our all of our adult church school classes are doing. So I recommend you take a look at it. There's lots there. And then, of course, you all also have um, your own Young Men's Bible class newsletter that our Christian Formation Department helps to put together every few months. And um, on the back, you'll see the September offerings for this month and who all coming to be part of that. And I wanted to especially mention to you all next Sunday. Next Sunday, there will be some folks from Peace Haven Community Farm that will be here. And Rachel Fish, who is our pastoral resident, will be with them. If you don't know about Peace Haven, you'll hear about it more next week. But it is a farm. It is a 90-acre farm out in the Whitsitt area. And it is a place where folks, adults, mainly young adults with this with disabilities live and work and enjoy Christian community. And a number of our young adults are in a Bible study with them. And so you'll see John Vanderwerf, who's one of our own elders, is part of that group. And John will be here next week as well. And you're also going to have a special treat because the coffee that you all will have next week is actually going to be coffee from a special blend. And a special blend is a coffee shop on Market Street. And it's a nonprofit as far as the fact that everybody who works there is an adult with a developmental disability. And so John volunteers and works there. Some of the members of Peace Haven volunteer and work there. So they are going to be here Sunday as well. And they're providing your coffee and as well as the coffee that will be in the Welcome Center. So I just wanted to tell you all about next Sunday as well. And then as I was coming out of Rejoice, Newton called me and handed me an announcement that he also wanted to make sure you all knew about. And that's about the Men's Faith and Fellowship Breakfast. We had one back in the April or May, maybe. I can't remember now. Um, it was very well attended. And so this one is on Saturday, September 17th. So it's in just a couple weeks. It's here in Redhead Hall. And it is going to be a pancake breakfast. And you are going to be enjoying fellowship and also hearing from several of the doctors in our church, the topic is faith and medicine. And so Bob Evans and Wells Brabham and Matt, Matt Wakefield are all going to be part of the presenters. Anybody have questions about things that are going on in the life of the church and or things that I spoke to today? Feel free to reach out to us. And I, I love that Lane mentioned that definition for Christian formation, because there has been kind of a shift in how we might think about typical Sunday school or church school, or probably the other word you may be used to hearing here is Christian education. And so one of the um, differences that we might mention in using the word formation is that it's just a little bit more holistic. When we think about Sunday school or Christian education, we typically think of the mind and just the head. And so that formation piece that Lane mentioned, which is that idea of forming us into the likeness of Jesus Christ. So the definition he gave was exactly the same one I would use, is that part of our role in Christian formation is to help folks of all ages be formed into the likeness of Jesus. And so it's not always just through head. It may be through heart and hands and lots of more holistic ways that we grow into the likeness of Jesus. And so one of those ways that we grow in the likeness of Jesus here at First Presbyterian with our children and youth is through some of our summer ministries. And the reason that they're a little bit different is because the children and youth, of course, are out of school for the summer, there's more opportunity to build relationships. And so a lot of what we do in the summer 
are around creating these relationships with each other, of course, with God and with other adults. So I just wanted to show you a little bit about what went on this summer at the church with children and youth. And I hope that either my clicking on the screen or the presenter I have here will work. So in June, we had a month of service projects. And so our youth could be engaged in a weekly opportunity to serve in the community. And one of the first ones that we did, this, is, this was our summer youth intern, Nolan Shilton. Nolan is from First Burlington and worked with us for the summer. And he's actually going to be continuing with us into the school year on Sundays. Nolan's getting ready to start tomorrow at Duke Divinity School. And so we get the opportunity to have it with us. We're at Out of the Garden. And Out of the Garden, if you know, this particular nonprofit is a large ministry to feed the hungry here in Greensboro. Their warehouse is located out off of 68. And we were um, packing food that day. Some of the girls. This group, I worked with them for a little bit. They were actually pouring and creating packages of rice to go into the meal bags. Lots of donations from the community. This is bread from one of the local bakeries that they were repackaging. This was ice cream afterwards with a few of them. Then we went out the next week to Peace Haven Community Farms, I just mentioned to you. We were helping that day to plant squash. So this was kind of a, a second round of squash planting for them. Um, I mentioned to you that Peace Haven is on a 90-acre farm out in Whitsitt. It's uh, right off of uh, Highway 61. More squash planting with the middle schoolers. Lots of opportunity at Peace Haven for community. This is Jeff. You'll see Jeff next week. He'll be here to talk with you all. Jeff is one of the core members at Peace Haven. He's been there since um, first ha Peace Haven was first in existence. Some of you may remember Buck Cochran. Buck was actually the founder and executive director of Peace Haven. Buck had an office here at First Presbyterian for seven years before Peace Haven was ever, anything was ever built there. So he and some members from Westminster really had the vision for Peace Haven Community Farm, and they spent lots of years um, raising awareness and funds before they actually created the first house where the core members lived. And my older son, Will, had an opportunity to work there the first two years they were in existence. He was one of the um, resident life folks. This is just some of our group that was there at Peace Haven that day. This is inside the home where uh, the residents and the um, core members live. Once again, you'll see Jeff next week. This is Ben. Ben is also very involved, and they're all members. Whoops. Uh, then the next week, we were actually at the Diaper Bank of North Carolina, which is located over Winston-Salem. So you may hear when we're collecting diapers, this is where they're going, to the Triad, triad Diaper Bank. Um, there is a large diaper bank ministry also down east in the Wilmington area. It's just gotten started. And also, in the Charlotte area, the um, diapers are something that food stamps do not cover. And yet, the need for diapers is huge, as you can only imagine. So we help collect diapers, and then when we were at the bank, we're actually putting together in packages where they're distributing them. Backpack Beginnings that we're very involved with is one of the places that distributes diapers. And 
several other places here in town. Now we're moving to um, July and our some of our younger, this is uh, older elementary and young middle school went to Passport Kids Camp. So we've been going to Passport for a number of years. And this year, actually, it was hosted here at Greensboro College. So we didn't have far to go, which in some ways was kind of nice. Some of the parents were more willing to let their kids go when it wasn't too far. Great opportunity for children to be in the overnight with caring adults that they know and trust and enjoy creating relationships as a group, but also with counselors and enjoying eating meals together, of course, <laughs> having fun together, getting to participate in worship leadership, Also getting to know other kids from um, around North Carolina, South Carolina. And Montreat, many of you know Montreat. It's our Presbyterian Conference Center, one of the three conference centers that the Presbyterian Church has in the United States. Um, Montreat is where we take our youth every summer. Um, and this particular summer was an extra special one. Well, that's interesting. Let's do it again. Part of being at Montreat is opportunity, once again, creating relationships, enjoying fun and fellowship, but also being part of a large conference setting. Um, I want to tell you about this picture uh, for a, a very important reason. Some of you may remember that last summer when our beloved Dolly Jacobs died, it was when we were at Montreat with our youth. And so um, this was a very uh, significant, special, memorable year because most of all of the kids that were at Montreat last year during the time of Dolly's death returned this year with us. And if you also remember, Dolly had been at Montreat. I actually came up and replaced her, and then she came home and then died the next day. And so the kids that were with her, this was a very, it's been a very difficult experience for them. Um, Dolly's daughter, of course, was with us as well um, when her mom died and also this current summer. Sydney, Dolly's daughter, and Macy McAllister, bon Bonnie and Dan's granddaughter, are youth elders this year, and they were very much a part of our youth experience. This picture, we're in the stream, one of the streams that runs right there through Bond Tree. And so what the kids decided they wanted to do this year on the day, the anniversary of the day that Dolly died, was to go rock hopping in the stream, which is a big thing that we always do at Montreat. And so we ventured down into the stream and we had an opportunity to just sit down on some rocks and all the kids took some rocks that they found in the water and we had some... Um, Sharpie markers, and a lot of them wrote things about Dolly on them. Um, and then we just gathered around, and some of them told what they wrote, and others just placed their rock, and we created this little um, kind of rock memorial for Dolly and had a prayer there. So it was, it was a, a special time for the kids and for us as adults. And there, they actually, there's the memorial. So we put the rocks for all. So some just, you know, drew symbols. Others wrote lots of messages. We came back from Montreat on 
Saturday, and then Monday was Kids Disciple Club and Vacation Bible School. So here's some pictures from that highlight, which is all once again a huge highlight of every summer. There's Sydney again. Dolly saw her; she came to help that week. Music right here in Redhead Hall with the older kids. Lots of outreach opportunities. These were for um, the Backpack Beginnings, which also, like Out of the Garden, is a huge ministry for feeding children here in Guilford County. <clears throat> we actually had an opportunity to do some yoga with one of our weekday preschool teachers as we thought about what it means to take care of ourselves and the bodies that God has given us. We do lots of fun things like going and jumping on the, at the trampoline park to end the week, so lots of outreach, Bible stories, <laughs> fun times. Lots of opportunities to dig into scripture and talk about what that means for our children and youth. We did a huge book collection. We collected over 500 books that we also took to Backpack Beginnings because they um, do a lot of work, once again, in Guilford County schools, providing not only food, but clothing, books, um, and many things that families need. Backpack Beginnings, just like Out of the Garden, were both started by one person who saw a need in the community. Parker White, who was the founder of Backpack Beginnings, was a mom who saw that some children in her daughter's classroom didn't have enough food. And so in her garage, she started collecting food, different neighbors would bring food over. Now they're in their third building. They went from a um, kind of strip mall area back over, off a Wendover um, small office to a larger area that included a warehouse near that to now their third location, which is um, the largest warehouse they have so far, which is where we got to go. And it includes not only a huge food distribution area, but a large area for clothing once again and books. And now they have an area as big as this room where folks that are referred to them can come in and shop. So all the distribution and collection is back in the warehouse area. And now if you were a family in Guilford County Schools that was referred by the social worker, which as you all know, every school in Guilford County now has a social worker. That shows you the great need in public schools that we have. Um, and so the social workers refer the families and then they come to Backpack Beginnings and actually get to shop so they can shop for their clothes. Lee Jones, who's one of our church members, Lee is in charge of the clothing, clothing closet, so she works very closely in that area. A number of our members are very involved at Backpack Beginnings. But my point that I lost track of was that both of those organizations were started by one person and then have moved to such large ministries. It's always good for the kids to remember that, how one person can make a difference. Part of Bible school, having the petting zoo, that's always a treat for the little ones. Lots of great volunteers that make these opportunities happen. All the children that uh, are in Bible school, their groups are all, they all have the same color-coded t-shirt, so <laughs> When you're when uh, Lane was talking about the children marching and trying to organize them, that's how we organize them. <laughs> they all have the same color t-shirt. So if you would like to be a leader for Bible school, know that you would not lose your children because your group would all be the same color coded t-shirt. Lots, lots, and here's some of our youth. Actually, John Stroud. Um, Y'all know John, I think his grandfather's a member of your class, get more. And he is with one of our, went to Montreat with us and also uh, was helping at Bible school the two days after we got back. 
Great Wolf Lodge was the last summer event for us in August with the children and youth. And there's some of our great volunteers once again. Cameron Jones, I just mentioned his mom, Lee, and Drew, I think Jones has been part of your class. Cameron uh, just started at Yale this week. Um, great kid, Paige student body president. Not that any of those things matter, but the great thing is he's involved in our church and youth leadership. And he also, after being at Montreat, went with us to Great Wolf Lodge to help with the middle schoolers. So, TJ Driscoll, one of our parent volunteers, Nolan, our summer intern. Great Wolf Lodge is a chance for those that are in the sixth, coming into sixth grade, to have an overnight experience. So, we go once again, making relationships with each other, spending time together, enjoying one another. Maddie Ballinger, David, and Holly, uh, Ann Albert's daughter, Mimi. Great opportunity. So that's just a small recap of our summer with our children and youth. And so I appreciate all that you all do to make those things happen by being members of the church and by giving your time and your talent and your ties to First Presbyterian, you help things like this happen for our children and our youth. And, and it also helps to form lots of adults who are working alongside of them. So thank y'all for your ministry and for what you all do here at First Presbyterian and for how you're faithful members of this class that continues to learn and grow and we're thankful for you. Thank you very much, Donna. <clears throat> I'm familiar with you were sitting on the steps telling the kids this story, but I didn't know you were involved in so many activities. Uh, I'm not going to try to repeat, uh, Donna, from uh, what we're going to have next week, other than a uh, new brand of coffee. And uh, let's see, I believe Rachel Fitch will be here uh, sort of leading the program. Uh, in, in the sanctuary today, uh, Jill Duffield's sermon title is A Different Kind of Kinship. If there are no other announcements, if anybody has anything they've thought of, fine. Otherwise, we'll have a closing prayer if you can stand. <clears throat> Father, life gets busy, and at times we lose track of the most important thing, and that is worshiping you. Forgive us for putting our schedules before you. Give us the grace to continue worshiping with other Christians for the glory of your name. Thank you for ministering to our hearts. Let worship be a lifestyle and not something we do just when we come to this place. In Jesus' name, we believe and pray. Amen. Amen.